and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I am your host, Fluff, and let's kick off 2018 correct. Happy New Year's, everybody. Uh, I, hopefully you're not too hungover. Like, maybe you went in early. Maybe maybe uh, you went full dad like I did and you didn't really do much. Or maybe you're hungover. I, you know what? I'm not judging, just theorizing. Either way, I'm here to help as you're probably vomiting uncontrollably in the early morning hours, wherever you are. First question! You get word about a major movie production on your life story. Who will star as Ryan Fluff Bruce? I mean, that's pretty easy. For you youngins, you probably don't remember this show, but there was a show in the 90s that I used to watch a lot called Home Improvement. And Al, played by Richard Karn, would be, would be me, maybe older me, but he would still be me nonetheless because I mean, he looks like this. It's basically me. Uh, otherwise, I would probably choose, I don't know, Brad Pitt, something like that. George Clooney, maybe, because I mean, they look like me too. But, you know, as my, so my mom says. But Richard Carmen is probably my first choice. Favorite classic video game console? I really love and have a lot of nostalgic feelings about the Nintendo NES entertainment system, the original Nintendo, but I also really loved the Super Nintendo because the Super Nintendo was really the first Nintendo console that you could consistently save your games and, and save your place in games and things like that. There were a few games on the NES that you could do that, but really it was kind of an uncommon thing. Like if you were playing Mario Brothers, you just had to leave the console on. I remember leaving the console on and putting tape over the red light so my buddy's mom wouldn't see that it was accidentally left on and then turn it off while we were at school. That's uh, that's the kind of things that you had to do before you could save your game. So man, that's, that's such a toss up. I would say if I had to pick a classic console, I would probably at the end of the day go with Super Nintendo just because I think Mario World is one of the best games ever made. Although Super Mario 3, which is on the NES, is realistically probably my favorite game of all time. Like for just straight gameplay and enjoyment. I mean, I, I've always wanted to get a tattooed sleeve of a Super Mario 3 scene on my arm. I mean, that's how much I love that game. And yeah, we'll go with Super Nintendo on a technicality. If you only had around $500 to spend on a tube amp for metal, what would you get? I actually get this question a lot. I mean, I get this question probably four or five times a week. And the question is always the same. I have about 500 bucks. I want a really good amp. I want an incredible amp with incredible cleans and incredible, I want to be able to do gent core and metal core and jazz and blues, but also super brutal death metal. But I don't want to spend any money doing it. I, I get it. I totally get it. But I tell everyone the same. You should absolutely save whatever money you can in addition to that 500 bucks and get to use PV6505 Plus or a 5150 or regular 6505. Get one of those because those can be had for about, last time I checked, like 700 bucks used, like on a Craigslist or something like that. Sometimes cheaper, sometimes a little more. But those amps are such bang for the buck. And you could also go smaller and go the uh, 6505 MH, but I mean, those brand new are 499. However, I would go with the big guy if you can swing it financially because you're gonna get the headroom, the power, and you can hang with a band if you get into a band situation and it can also do bedroom volume as well. It's a great classic all around amp for 500-ish dollars. If you had to grab an amp from a brand that you normally wouldn't use, what would you grab? Hmm, that is a good question. I have not plugged into one, well, I've plugged into one for like five minutes at my buddy James's uh, guitar store in Seattle, but I would probably pick one of those Supros, the Supro combos. Those look amazing and all the clips I hear, then I'm like, wow, that's a really good kind of rock and roll tone. It always ends up being those dang Supros and I don't know much about the Supros. I know obviously it's a tribute to the original Supros from the 60s. Jimmy Page used a Supro on the Zeppelin record and blah, 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 blah. 
but I'm seeing more and more of those pop up kind of like on the YouTube land. I'm like, man, those are awesome. Those look really good. So I'll probably pick a Supro. I don't know which one. I don't know anything about the models, but I would probably go for like a 112 or 212. I don't know if they make 212. 112 Supro combo. And now Fluff reads a tweet. What do you call a dinosaur with an extensive vocabulary? A thesaurus. My suggestion to you this week is to check out this awesome video from my friends at Reverb.com. They sit Troy Van Leeuwen from Queens of the Stone Age down and he watches their attempt to replicate uh, some tones from Queens of the Stone Age records over the years using pedals. And he kind of critiques the tone and up, no, nope, that should be on the neck pickup or that should be a single coil, or that should be a telly. It's a really fun video to watch. I'm a huge Queens of the Stone Age fan and I'm a huge fan of Troy as he was also in Failure back in the day. Great video, very entertaining, very fun. I thought you guys would really dig this as well. All the links down below in the description. You've been wonderful, I've been fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.